Hey, it's Cheryl. Welcome to Homebridge Studio. Today I have four thrift flips for you, and I am participating in the Thrift Flip Road Trip Open Challenge. It is hosted by three wonderful women, very talented, uh, Kay and Trish from Crafting Cousins, and also Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. Uh, these three women are super talented, as all of the participants are today. I have posted the link for Unicorn Dust Designs and Crafting Cousins, as well as the playlist in the description box below. The playlist features all of the participants in today's challenge, and you won't want to miss this. Enjoy! Okay, for the first DIY... I flipped these, or well, I flipped them, but I bought them for $2.79 each. And they, I believe, are from the 1970s. I just really liked the flower picture in the middle, but the frame was pretty beat up. So first, what I did was removed very carefully the cardboard inside with the flowers on it. It's a print. I thought it was something a little different, but... Um, I really liked it, thought it was pretty, and I just wiped it off with a dry um, cloth. And I could not get the glass out, but the glass on the inside and the outside were pretty dirty, so I took some awesome window cleaner from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going around and trying to clean the edge, too, of the glass. And after that's all cleaned, and I cleaned the frame, too, I wiped it down with a damp sponge. I taped off the glass because I want to get this green paint and this is Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. And I want to paint the entire frame, the front and the sides and the inside by the glass and all around the entire frame. And let that dry. And I have this crackle. And this is from Folk Art and it's a crackle medium. After the frame is dry, and you got to work fast because this dries kind of fast. I spread the crackle very carefully in an up and down motion around the whole frame. And when that was dry, and it has to be very dry, I took the um, Waverly chalk paint in plaster. And you have to work really fast with this too because it'll start cracking before <laughs> when it, as you're painting. So I painted again everywhere where the green was. I just didn't paint the back of the frame. Not until later. I just put plaster on the back. And then I took my blow dryer after I was done painting it in the white paint. And I just went around the edge because I just think it's really cool to watch this crackle. I, there's just something really cool about it. It just makes me feel good inside. I don't know why, but... It was fun. So basically, I'm doing this method on all of my flips because I'm trying to make this whole ensemble go together. So I did this same exact thing with both of my frames. And like I said, just make sure that you dry it really well between each coat. And I don't know why I'm showing you <laughs> blow drying this for so long, but oh well, sorry. Um, this is Rub and Buff. I got it from Hobby Lobby. It's uh, $6.49 and it is antique gold. And this is the first time I've ever used Rub and Buff. Um, it was kind of, I don't know, spongy. I don't know if this was old or if it's just, it's just the way it is. I don't know. But um, I ended up figuring out how to perfect it. Um, if you're doing this around anything wood make sure that there are no splinters that you know maybe go around it with some sandpaper first because there was a little splinter in this frame and yeah I kind of poked my finger a little bit but I didn't hurt it bad or anything but it's all good and I just went around the inside and the outside of this frame And it takes a while kind of to perfect this. So you can, you, they say you can put it on a sponge or your finger. I thought I could control my finger better. And then you can just uh, take a, a paper towel like I did here and you can just kind of buff it out. And I thought it turned out really pretty. I, I love these pictures. When I first saw them, I knew I had to get them. I didn't know what I was going to do, but until today, <laughs> but um, 
I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So hey, if you're a subscriber, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't be here without you. My channel is growing and it's because of you. Thank you. If you're not a subscriber, welcome to my channel. Consider subscribing because I have a lot of really cool ideas. I'm not afraid to try different types of artwork. And here's what they look like when they're done. For my second DIY, this is, I don't know what it is. It's some kind of a bird tray that I picked up at the Goodwill, uh, $2.49 for it. I have no idea what this was, if it was part of a fountain or whatever, but I really liked it because if you know me and you watch my videos, I love birds. <laughs> and so I'm doing kind of the same technique here. And I don't know why that went blank. I've been having a hard time <laughs> with this video for some reason. But I put this elephant chalk paint, Waverly on the bird first, which was this kind of the same color of the leaf and the bird. And then I put the crackle on top of that after it dried. And then now I put in baking soda, a tablespoon of baking soda, and you'll see later on in this video, I kind of went out of order of as far as the way I <laughs> um, made these things. But I think it was like a tablespoon of baking soda with, I don't know, a quarter cup of white plaster chalk paint and mix that around a little bit and I added like a little like a teaspoon maybe half a teaspoon of water so it wasn't so thick and then I went ahead and painted all of that and then took my blow dryer because you know I like to watch it crack <laughs> so I had to take the blow dryer to all of these and I'm not doing as much on this one and then the previous ones or not the previous ones the next ones because I already showed you how to do this so I'm just going to kind of speed through it. Now, I distressed that one a long time ago. That's a candle holder from the Dollar Tree. And you can go ahead and take it and glue it on top of that. You could probably use it for a candy dish, but I don't know. You might have to seal it with something to make sure that it's, um, you know, food safe or whatnot. Or you could put bird seed in it or marbles or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, so now on the bottom, I did paint that with the plaster. And then I put, um, and in the, wait, no, not in the plaster. Yeah, I painted it with the plaster, and then I went ahead and put um, crackle on it. But my crackle had a little bit of this elephant color in it um, because I was <laughs> working really fast. And so this is what happened when I mixed the paint in with the crackle. And you can see it has a stone effect. Um, really cool. I thought it was really cool. So I just did the same thing as the top, only I did the opposite. And like I said, the only difference is it had in the crackle a tiny bit of the paint. And it just gave it a whole different effect that I thought was super cool. So this didn't really crackle, but it just made it look like a stone. So I'm going to have to do this again, probably on a candlestick. Yeah, isn't that cool? just different, unique. And that's a picture of what it looks like. You'll see a better picture later at the end of this video. This is a box that I also picked up from the thrift shop. Uh, it was $3.99. I'm sure I didn't pay all that much for it. Um, I liked the gold feet and I liked the little um, ball on the top of that. This box was pretty beat up. Um, so I had to clean it up really good. I had to put goo gun on it, had stickers all over it. Um, yeah, it was kind of a mess. Um, 
So I'm going to leave the inside that green color, which I liked, and I'm just painting the outside with the moss color, chalk paint. And then again, we're gonna put the crackle on. Just one thin coat of all of the paint. That's all I'm using on all of these. Let it dry really good. And you can see I left that gold on the top and around the sides. I really like that gold. And so now that the plaster is drying, this is where I mixed that paint up earlier that I used on the bird. And by the way, that knife I got from the Dollar Tree, they have um, for three bucks all these paint brushes and sponges and the mixing and all that for three dollars at the Dollar Tree Plus. So I thought that was a really cool, um, inexpensive way to, you know, when I'm working with glues and, you know, Mod Podge and stuff like that, I don't like to use my good brushes for obvious reasons. So anyway, now I am just taking this plaster that has the um, tablespoon of baking soda yes baking soda in it and it painted and I'm gonna show you this watch this this is so cool look at this I love this I'm gonna do it on all four sides because I just can't get enough of this see that I think it's just so super cool so yeah I was having fun with this one <laughs> And I did it to the lid too. And as you can see, I didn't touch the feet. Now, here's a mistake and I left it in my video. I, I use a little bit too much of this gold. And this gold is antique gold and it is acrylic um, by Folk Art. So I took this little paper. It, it's a really thin piece of paper that I got from Timu. I don't know if it's like a journaling paper, but it's really, really, really thin and very easy to tear and I thought if I just put it on the silicone mat here and paint real quick I can pick it up and then you know put it on my um my box but I couldn't pick it up because the paintbrush as I was painting it was ripping this piece and I ended up throwing it out it was trashed so I had a better idea I had to take another piece and very, very lightly, very, very carefully, not saturating this fine piece of paper. And I was holding it in my hand because it was just wanting to tear on me. I painted part of it a little bit at a time. And it looks like I'm being a little, you know, quick. And um, this video, I had to speed it up for time purposes, but I am being very slow and I'm only painting a little bit at a time and not super saturating the paper because these are super delicate. And so I got that painted and I kept holding it in my hand so it wouldn't rip. And then this silicone mat is from Timu. I don't remember how much I paid, like three or four bucks. You get two of them, they're pretty good size. And see how the paint wipes right off of that. And then my Mod Podge have that and that little um, I don't know what you call it it's like it's a grip for you know to get lids off that's from Timu too that was amazing it was like 50 cents or something so I'm just putting a quick coat of Mod Podge on that and then I'm taking this painted piece of paper and I'm tapping it very carefully on top of this and I was thinking about a stencil, but I wanted to try something different and I wasn't sure how the stencil would work on crackle, if it would bleed too much. So that's why I did this, but I'll probably try a stencil later on and something else, but that's what it looks like when it's done. And now for the last one, this ugly yellow basket. It was really dirty. I got this, I live in Michigan, but I got this in Kentucky when I was visiting my daughter. And of course I had the whole eye roll like, ooh, mom, what is that? That's disgusting. It was a buck 99. I think they gave it to me for a dollar. So I cleaned it up really, really good with a scrub brush because that's how dirty it was. And now I'm painting it with the Waverly Moss chalk paint. 
And it's easier kind of just to get a junky brush and kind of really see how I'm like stippling it in there. That's the best way to paint these kind of baskets. And to go sometimes go up and down and back and forth and then just stipple it in to get it all in there and let that dry and now I had poured too much of that gold in there so I thought you know what I'm gonna outline this with gold because everything else is outlined with gold except my bird tray and now I'm taking just a piece of foam from the Dollar Tree hot glued that right there and all of these flowers are from the Dollar Tree and so I picked out, I have a huge, huge stash of flowers, and I picked out all of the colors that actually match the flowers in the picture frames that I did earlier. So the blues and the yellows and a little bit of red and a lot of green and a little bit of white. And I just kind of took them and, um, you know, put them in there. I did remove that piece that I just put in that long, I don't know what you call them, but I did remove that. I didn't like that in there. But I just kept building it up and building it up, just using various shapes and sizes of the flowers and keeping in the same color scheme and just trying to hide the foam. And another trick to hide the foam is to put, obviously, Spanish moss in there. But I didn't need to this time because I had enough flowers. And I just kind of kept putting things in there. Or if I didn't like it, pull it out. You want them big and small and long and short. All different shapes and sizes. And that is what gives a floral arrangement some interest. And I had that bow from Timu. It was just a, I don't know, just a bow that anybody could make, but I had it, so I thought I would use it. And that's what it looked like. And this is what the whole vignette looks like together. And see how those flowers kind of mimic the flowers in the picture frame? They're not exact, but I don't know if I could find exact, but... Um, yeah, and there's that box. Love that crackle. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm pretty happy with all these pieces. Um, what do you think? Tell me. Let me know which one is your favorite piece. And uh, if you have any ideas with the rub and buff, um, it, it was okay. I, I guess I just have to perfect it a little bit more. I get a little heavy in some areas and lighter in other areas, but I think it all turned out fine. That birdhouse I did thrift, but I didn't do anything with it. I just put it on a candle stand. That candle is a eucalyptus, and it is from Kirkland's. I think I got it last year. And there's a little bird. I didn't patch that hole in there, but I figured I could put like those little gems from the Dollar Tree, like green ones or something. But anyway, let me know which one is your favorite. Thanks for watching Homeward Studio. I appreciate you. You have a blessed day and a blessed week. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.